Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're taking a look at Rise. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to the age of industry, folks, where each of us has our own society that we are trying to progress by rising up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different progress tracks. We have got, um, what do we got here? We've got politics, science, arts, and culture. Finance and banking, industry, bureaucracy. We've got uh, environmental protection and the welfare of the people. We have got education and we have got news. And over the course of this game, we are going to be trying to uh, work our way up all of these tracks. And as part of setup, I'm over here. I'm starting with my three coins and I've got a starting school tile that is focused on science, which kind of gives me an early nudge. Maybe I really want to double down on science. Jen's in the same situation. She's got three coins. She can focus on arts and culture. And uh, otherwise, we are ready to go. Each one of these boards is two-sided. There's an A and a B side. And depending on which side for each one, it uh, sometimes can fundamentally change the uh, way that these tracks function. Sometimes they're just simple. They just change the different targets. Sometimes they change in big ways. And I've got a random selection. That's a B. That's a B. That's an A. That's an A. There's a B, a B, a B, an A, a B. So every time you play, you're going to get a different combination of the 10 different facets of your society that you are trying to improve. So let's get going. Now, um, we're going to play over seven decades and, or seven rounds, and uh, this is the breakdown of how they work. First of all, we get income. Now, we don't do that in the first age of this game because we got income as part of setup. By the way, the third and the fourth player would have had a little bit more cash. But we're skipping that. Uh, we'll worry about income next next round. Uh, then we draw seven new cards. Um, three event cards, one, two, three, and four action cards. So we've got these two decks over here of eras one, two, and three that we're going to work our way through. And as part of setup, I took 18 of these cards out. And I forget, something like nine of these event cards out. So you never know exactly what you're going to get in each age. But right off the bat, these are the four actions that players will be able to choose from. Each player is going to pick one of these cards to determine what they're going to do. And we have some events. There is a lecture. There is another lecture. And there is summer vacation. Okay. So, that is the setup. I am the first player, and this is a worker placement game for all intents and purposes. I can choose to do this action card, this one, this one, or this one. Now, the further to the right I go, the more it costs me. Remember, I have three coins. If I want to do this, it's going to cost me three coins, two coins, one coin, or it's free if I come over to this one. So, what do I want to do? Well, I think... I think I'm going to go big. The further to the right you go, the more powerful the action, but the more it costs, I'm going to come over here. That is going to cost me all of my starting capital. Easy come, easy go. You got to spend money to make progress. So that was it for me. Now, I don't actually do the action yet because we got to wait until all players, all one, two, three, or four players, although actually there is no solo mode in this game, which drives me batty. This game would be so perfect for solo, but worry about that in the final thought. So um, Jen is the second player. She can go to any of these ones as well, including this one. Now she comes over here to where I am, which means she's going to have to pay through the nose like I did, she would be placed to the left of me. And where you are relative to other players is hugely important. There's a reminder of it right here uh, when it's talking about how we're in this phase when we place our little industrial workers down. So if at a higher player count game, you or three or four players, if a player visits a card that somebody else has already gone to, they go to the left of that to indicate that they will do the action first because all these actions are resolved from left to right. But the player, the players, I should say, to the right of that player get to activate one of their school cards. And in this case, if Jen comes here, uh, I would get to activate my science school, which means I'd move forward on the science progress track. Now, at a higher player count game, a player has to land on the same card as somebody else. It's kind of what this picture shows here. But in a two-player game, it doesn't matter where Jen goes. 
If she goes to the left of me, I am going to get that bonus for free. And that's one of the reasons I came all the way over here. If I, say, had chosen to come here um, to get access to these benefits instead of those benefits, first of all, it would only cost me 2 bucks instead of 3 bucks. but then Jen might have come over here. And since she didn't go to the left of me, I would not get the benefit of activating my school. And getting to activate these is a huge uh, deal. It's a big bonus that can really trigger lots of combo chains. So that's why I came over here, because it doesn't matter where Jen goes, I'm going to get to activate this for free. And there's the reminder of it right here. So anyway, Jen's still got to decide, is she going to go there or save some money and go to one of the earlier ones? Now, the main reason you want to go further to the right is, well, what I just talked about. If you are earlier in turn order, you want to be further to the right, so you're more likely to be able to activate your school tiles. But maybe you don't have any school tiles to activate. Maybe they're all spent. The other reason to go further to the right is these event cards. We are going to resolve anybody who came to this card, then anybody who is further to the right gets the benefit of this event. Then anybody who is here gets to do their action. And then anybody that's still further to the right gets this event. So me coming all the way over here means I get the benefit of both of these lectures and this summer vacation. And I'm pretty happy about that. I think I'm going to have a way to make that work that's going to be very, very uh, uh, very impressive. It's going to have a really strong first turn because I'm going to get both of these lectures. Now, um, I don't think Jen wants to pay through the nose for all of that. So she probably wants to save some cash. So what does she want to do? Well, here's an interesting thing. Remember, she started with a school that was about culture and arts. If she just comes over here, she'll have an opportunity to advance on the culture and art track even further. That's what this action is about. If she came here, she'd be able to advance on the politics track. If she came here, she'd be able to advance either on the um, industry or or the bureaucracy track. Now me, when I eventually get to go, I'm either going to advance on industry or bureaucracy, or if I want to pay more money, I can do a double advancement. Each one of these action cards has a choice. You can do the top thing for free, or you can do the bottom thing for an extra cost. I think Jen says, you know what? She's going to come over here um, because there's a few benefits. She doesn't have to pay anything. And because she's all the way over here to the left at the end of the round, it's going to look like this. And Jen is going to be the first player in round two. So uh, further to the left means you'll be uh, sooner in turn order in the next round. Further to the right means you'll get more bonuses and have a better shot of activating your schools. But you'll be broke more than likely. So anyway, Jen has chosen her spot. Now we start resolving from left to right. Jen is first out of the gate, and I think rather than doing advancing once on the uh, arts and culture track, she'll spend a coin, since she saves some money, to advance twice. So she is the first out of the gate. So let's do this thing. She's moving up twice on this track. She is the blue player, so she moves once, and now she pauses this action to, because she hit this spot, she now advances once on the bureaucracy track. Boom. Okay. Now, advancing on the bureaucracy track, uh, whichever side you play, the A or the B, doesn't give you anything immediately, but anytime you want, depending on how far you've got, you can cash in your progress and get potentially a whole bunch of actions. But as it is, Jen has moved up one. Now, remember, she's moving two, so we come back over here. She moves up again, and this says if she wants to spend a coin, the uh, red circle there, the, the red coin, if she wants to spend a buck, which she will, so now she's down to one, she could increase the prosperity of her people, which she will now do. Boom, she went up one. Now, if she could move up one more space, then at the uh, end of every round, she would start passively scoring victory points. On the flip side, if your people are unhappy and you start working your way down, you could start losing points every turn. Now, that is very different than if we were playing on the other side, where instead, as we work our way up, there's a lot more points to be had, but these are end of game points we're getting rather than um, end of round points. So the, uh, the prosperity track works differently depending on which side you choose. So Jen moved up one by um, moving up twice over here. And whenever Jen wants, she can, even if it's not her turn, she could say, hey, you know what? However far I went up the bureaucracy track, I'm going to crash that in and get some rewards. But I think she is done for now. So she has finished this. Now, um, you know, she takes her thing back. This card is out of the game. And now we deal with the lecture.
Um, anybody who's to the right gets this. I am to the right. So this lecture says I get to activate my school tile. So I'm going to activate it. It's a science tile, which means I move forward once on the science track, and I have a choice. I can move forward on a bureaucracy like Jen did, or I could move forward on education. I'm going to move forward on education over here, which means um, this one, I could choose any four of these options on the next level. Now, if I come here, it says, oh, I could activate another school tile, but I don't have another school tile. My only one is exhausted. So instead, I'm going to grab this, this, or this, and it's my choice. I could do this um, you know, population prosperity, this politics, or this bureaucracy, and this would be a second school tile that I could be using throughout the rest of the game. So do I want to be able to push my prosperity up, my politics up, or my bureaucracy up? I think politics. So I'm going to move up to this space. And so now I have a second school tile. Okay, cool. So that was the lecture that let me activate my school. And any other players who were further to the right, they would have gone to activate their starting school as well. But anyway, now this is done and it can go into its discard pile. Nobody came here, so we can skip that. Right? Uh, and now we have another lecture. Uh, it was totally random that two lectures came out, but this worked out great for me because, hey... I just got a brand new um, school. Uh, with this lecture, I'm going to activate that and move up on the politics track. And by doing that, I'm going to move up on the bureaucracy track. So boom, 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 boom. Combos are starting to flow. Alrighty, nobody came here. We can ignore that. And now it's time for my summer vacation. And it's like I planned this, folks. This symbol here means refresh all of your schools. So now I've got my two schools ready to be used again in the future. And then finally, I've made it over here and I am going to do my action. I can advance on the industry or the banking track, or if I spend three coins, I can go up on industry twice. Now that would be great, but remember, I'm broke. So I am not going to do that. I'm going to move forward on industry or banking. And which one do I want to do? Here they both are. If I move up on industry, well, it's going to have some good news and bad news. The bad news is my environmental track is going to fall. And that could start causing me problems. But the good news is at the start of the uh, next decade, I am going to get two bucks income instead of the one bucks that Jen is going to get. So that's if I move up on industry. And by the way, again, as an, another example of how things change, if we were on the other side, you will notice that, hey, the first step, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, suffer some pollution, but increase your income. But then you have a choice. You could keep increasing your income and points at a very, very high rate, but get more and more pollution. Or you could branch down this way and uh, continue to increase your income without but not anywhere near as fast, but without any um, bad pollution. So you could basically focus on clean industry or dirty industry. Now, we're playing the A side of this one, so it's a little bit more straightforward. Yeah, all industry is bad for the environment, and it is something that I will have to deal with. That's if I move up on this. But remember, I'm choosing. Do I move on this, or do I want to move up on the banking? Okay. And the banking works a bit differently. First of all, by hitting this spot, I am going to produce some unrest. Remember how Jen worked her way up. Her people are happier. Me, my people, would start to be unhappy, which is not good. But on the other hand, I'd be here. And the same way that as you move up bureaucracy, however far you are, anytime you want, you can um, come back to this and, re and get a whole bunch of stuff. This industry tile works the same way. I could, um, you know, I'd make my people unhappy by really investing in banking, but then I could immediately reset this and get three coins. So I'd be back to where I've started. I have a bunch of cash. Or if I work my way up, I could get more benefits that would ultimately um, come into play when I fall back down. And now once again, I'm not going to do this for all of them, but just to show how different it is on the other side, the other banking side, the A side, uh, just gives you more unrest as as you go, but um, and none of this reset stuff that you have to start working your way climbing up again. So all of these um, progress work differently depending on how you have your game set up. I think I am going to invest 
in some industry, which means my income is going to go up, and sadly, my environment is going to suffer. Now, if I fall down again, I'm going to have to take this tile that says at the end of the round, my environmental situation is so dire, I cannot carry more than three coins over from round to round. And that's a real problem if I make a lot of money and I don't spend it. Now, by default, our um, storage tile here says we can store up to five coins from round to round, but the more I pollute, the worse it gets. This can be upgraded to let you store up to 10 coins per round if you can work your way up the progress track and unlock that for yourself. Like over here at level 2 bureaucracy or over here at level 3 banking. So anyway, so I pumped that up. That's fallen. is isn't causing me a problem yet, but it'll start causing me a problem if I pollute even more. So I might want to look for ways to clean up my act and go to the right on this track. Okay. So, um, right, I had no money, so I chose industry, and now that is done. Boom, we have finished all the activations, and now the last thing we do is, if anybody has too much money based on their storage re restrictions, they have to get rid of the rest, and if anybody has any end-of-round effects happening, they get that. If Jen were one step further forward, she would have started, she'd score a point automatically at the end of every round, but right now, nobody has any passive end-of-round income. And that's it. We have finished the first of seven rounds. Easy peasy. It's time to go on to round two, and now we get some income. My income is two. Jen's income is one. Okay. And then new cards come out. New actions, which Jen is going to have first dibs on. All right. And then we need some events. And you know what? We had two matching events. I mean, that could totally happen. I just want to shuffle this deck up one more time to ensure that hopefully I mix things up and you folks get to see a wider variety of events and no duplicates. Um, although that duplicate worked out very well for me in the first turn. So the events are elections. It's election time. Rent increase, oh, which makes some money, but makes our people very unhappy. And a festival, which just straight out scores points. Okay. And this seems like a pretty good spot to take a brief pause. And folks, if you would like to watch this game to continue to evolve and more cool combo chains to erupt, well, you might want to hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the links down in the show notes to go to the extended playthrough. Or instead, if you just want to hear what Jen and I thought of the game, again, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner or follow the links down in the show notes. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.